Hello everybody, I'm David, welcome back to Sailing Madness. Now as you can see I'm back on my own boat, I'm back after my travels to Portugal. If you watched the last couple of episodes you'd have seen that I helped to crew a big old wooden sailing boat from the UK down to the Algarve. Well I'm back here in the UK, back on my boat and I'm doing my unpacking. And whilst I've been doing some unpacking I thought I'd make a very quick video for you today to talk about some of the clothing that I wear when I'm sailing. Now this is obviously very subjective this is what works for me it might work for you it might not so of course if there's anything that I've missed or anything you disagree with anything that's worked for you that maybe we should talk about then please put your comments and your questions in the box below so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work from the head down and talk about the stuff that I was wearing on that trip to Portugal and also some of the stuff that I wear when I'm sailing here around the UK. So talk about hats first of all. Now a lot of people wear baseball caps when they're sailing as indeed I did on my trip to Portugal. You'd have seen me wearing this black hat quite a lot in the videos in the last couple of episodes. Now these are not ideal for wearing on a boat. Um, they're okay in light winds but I've witnessed so many times these hats being blown off people's heads in a gust and nine times out of ten when that happens the hat goes overboard and ends up in the sea. Now of course when you're sailing along the last thing you want to be doing is changing your sailing plan, turning the boat around and coming around to pick up a hat that's floating in the water. Uh, nine times out of ten most of the time that doesn't happen and once that hat goes overboard it's lost for good. So what I tend to do in windier conditions is I wear my trusty Musto baseball cap and this has an extra cord on the back of it. On the end of the cord is a clip and what you do is when you're wearing this hat you attach the clip to the collar of the top that you're wearing and should a gust of wind blow the hat off your head that will stop it going overboard. Ingenious. So highly recommend a musto baseball cap for when you're sailing. Now of course as I said baseball caps are not ideal and what I tend to wear most of the time is my Tilly hat. Like a baseball cap it's got a ridge on it that keeps the sun out your eyes and of course it keeps the sun off your head as well but the advantage of a Tilly hat is it's got a nice two nice straps that go around your chin and that stops the hat blowing off your head. As you can see my Tilly hat is well worn. Um, this has got wet and salty more times than I care to remember. The air holes in the top are starting to corrode so it's about time I bought a new one. But I am told that what you can do is Tilly will replace this hat for me for free if I traded it in for another one. So maybe I might do that in the next couple of weeks and I'll get a new hat for the rest of the sailing season for this year. Right moving on from hats let's talk about sunglasses. Now as you can see I wear glasses to correct my vision and so I'm a bit restricted of what sunglasses I can wear. What I have been wearing recently is my set of prescription Ray-Ban sunglasses. Now prescription or no prescription what you need to be wearing on a boat when you're out in the sea is polarised lenses. Now polarised lenses help you see what's below the surface of the water a lot better than non-polarised lenses. So whatever your sunglasses of choice are make sure the lenses are polarised. Right let's talk about tops. Now tops are very important and if you've watched the um, Portuguese videos you'd have seen me wearing a lot of tops that look like this. Now these are 100% polyester tops and I always wear these when I'm sailing for a number of reasons. First of all they give you factor 50 sun protection and because of that I always choose to wear long sleeve versions of these. You can buy these in short sleeved. I much prefer the long sleeved and as you can see this one is Gill. Um, I've got um, what's this one I think this is Musto get it the right way up yep yeah, it's a musto one so I'm not loyal to any one brand but I've got Gill I've got musto I think I've got some Helly Hansen ones as well but I also have got a lot of unbranded ones now this is an unbranded one and the main difference between the two they're just as comfortable but these are half the price so you typically pay around 50 pounds for a branded top whereas you can pick these ones up on Amazon for about 15 to 20 pounds so they're less than half price and they're just as comfortable the factor 50 on them is just as good and so I highly recommend 100% polyester tops uh, the other advantage for these is if they get wet they dry very very quickly so if you get caught in a shower or a rogue wave gets you wet these will dry a lot quicker than say a cotton top like the one I'm wearing today. So whenever I'm sailing I always wear 100% polyester tops. And the other advantage as well is if you go away for a long time you build up a laundry bag when you wash these 
hang them over the rail, they dry a lot quicker and then when they're dry all you do is you fold them up and stick them in a locker. You don't need to iron them and when you get them out they're perfect to wear. These obviously would need ironing, they take a lot longer to dry um, so I don't bother taking anything that's cotton on a boat when I'm sailing. And it's the same for my shorts as well. Uh, this is my favourite shorts at the moment. I've got a couple of pairs of these. I bought these from JD Sports. Now a couple of things I look for in a pair of shorts. They have to be the polyester material again so if they get wet they dry a lot quicker. I have to have for comfort elasticated waists. I've got branded sailing shorts that are not elasticated waists and they're expensive. I never ever wear them. So elasticated waist and polyester is the way to go for me. I also have to have zipped pockets on all my shorts as well. Uh, for obvious reasons, you don't want stuff falling out your pockets that could potentially go overboard and be lost forever. I've seen people lose mobile phones out of their pockets and I indeed nearly lost a set of keys uh, out of a, a non-zip pocket when I was wearing some shorts a couple of years ago. I took a step from the pontoon onto the boat and the keys that were in my pocket fell out. Now I was so lucky the keys fell onto the pontoon. They were inches away from falling off the pontoon and into the water. Had they gone in the water I'd have lost them forever. And on that set of keys was my car keys, the keys to the boat, my house keys, my business property keys. I had various alarm fobs on that key ring as well. So if I'd have had to replace all those keys it would have been a disaster. So from that day to this day all my shorts like the ones I'm wearing today have got zips and obviously you put your keys your mobile phone in your pocket and you make sure you do the zip up. So I never go on a sailing boat without an elasticated waist and a zip pocket. Right, footwear is very important on a boat. You need non-slip shoes. There's all sorts of brands available. A couple of examples here. I've got a nice Gill pair here that I wear quite a lot. This is an unbranded one, cheap one from Amazon. Again, white sold, so non-slip, very, very good. Don't wear normal trainers on a boat. Now, boots are also very important for foul weather and for when you're taking your dinghy to shore. Now these particular boots are Gill. I paid £50 for these a couple of years ago when I was doing a competent crew course where we pulled into a marina for an evening, big marina on the south coast, nice chandlers, had a good look round and these were 50 quid. What a bargain. Now I know a lot of people absolutely swear by Dubarry boots. Now I personally have never tried them on uh, but you will pay £350 for a pair of Dubarry boots. I paid 50 quid for these so a seventh of the price. So Dubarry is supposed to be the most comfortable and the longest lasting but are they worth seven times the amount of what I paid for these? I don't know. If you're a fan of Dubarry boots then please tell me why I should buy a pair of Dubarry boots but I tend to only wear these in the dinghy when I'm going to shore if I'm landing on a beach I want a pair of boots to stop my feet getting wet and these have served that purpose more than adequately over the last couple of years. Right jackets let's talk about foul weather and this is one area where I don't think you should try and save money. I've got a very nice Pelly Hansen light rain jacket. I've worn this a couple of times just to keep me dry from a passing shower. It's a lightweight jacket. It's not going to make you too hot um, and that's been great. Nice wood on it as well. Stop messing your hair up as you know as you can see I need to be careful I don't mess my hair up too much. So Helly Hansen highly recommend them. And then finally foul weather gear. Now this as I said you shouldn't skimp on foul weather gear. Um, I've got the full musto kit here. I've got the big offshore jacket. I've got the offshore salopettes as well. I've never actually worn these but I'm sure at some point in the future I'll be grateful for them. Um, so together they cost over a thousand pounds. You can buy cheaper. Um, there are as well as Musto there are other brands like Halley Hansen. Uh, Gill also do a nice set. I tried them all on in a Chandler's a couple of years ago and I found the Musto jacket and salopettes were the most comfortable so that's what I bought. Um, you might think differently, you might have your own preference, but for me Musto was the way to go forward. Right, well I think that's covered just about everything, giving you hopefully something to think about. One last thing I would say is if you are going on a boat, and this is for people who may be not so experienced, if you are going on a boat, whether you're chartering or whether you're going to join someone as crew on their boat, when you turn up, when you pack your bags, please don't turn up with 
a suitcase like the sort of suitcase you take on a holiday what you must be taking on a boat is a duffel bag like this you may notice this is what I took to Portugal um, they're not ideal for flying I give you that but when you unpacked on the boat you can fold this up and tuck it away somewhere and get it out of the way trust me a skipper will not thank you for turning up with a big suitcase onto his boat because there is just nowhere to put a suitcase once you've unpacked so if you can always use a duffel bag okay so that just about does it for day for today i hope you found this little short video fairly useful i just thought i'd throw that out there as i'm unpacking my bags after my portuguese trip if you have enjoyed it give me a like if you're not done so already please subscribe and any comments or questions or anything you want to add then please put your comments in the box below i do enjoy reading all the comments and questions from all my video uploads now i do have a patreon account as well so if you'd like to support future episodes please consider becoming a patron all my patrons get exclusive access and also a live tracker so you can see exactly where I am and if you'd like to find out more about becoming a patron again there is a link in the box below so until next time thanks again for watching take care see you soon bye bye